Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Mohammed, and I am presenting this talk. It's basically it's, a, it's my journey, how I started uh, learning Raku, and what are the what are the what are the uh, features that I come across in the Raku language, and and how how I dealt with them. Uh, during my journey is that's all uh, I'm going to talk about in this presentation. I hope it can inspire somebody to get into Raku and start learning Raku. Uh, I myself, a poly developer, I'm not not a, I'm not into Raku uh, as, as, a, as a day job. I'm still a poly developer, but I like the language, so that's how I started doing my bits into Raku, that's where I started. So let's start with my uh, presentation. So it, it, it all started uh, uh, on 25th of November, 2017. It's nearly how many years? That's 2022 now, five years ago. And nearly five years ago, it started with uh, uh, at the London Pearl Workshop, uh, if I remember. Uh, I, uh, at the end of the Freud workshop, uh, I was presented uh, a book uh, on uh, Think Pearl Six by Neil Bowers uh, for my contribution to CPAN. And that's where my, before, I knew Pearl Six before, the, it's a new language, but never had a chance to actually look into the details like the syntax or anything about Pearl Six because I was too busy in my career. But this book gave me an opportunity to actually read about Perl 6 and find out what exactly is behind the Perl 6, how, how it works and, and many other, other bits and pieces. But even, even though when having received this book, I, I, didn't put, I didn't pay too much attention. I didn't put too much time on, on it to actually learn the language itself. So it was kind of uh, left in my bookshelf and so I kind of like uh, put it on hold for, for a long time. But then uh, uh, when I went to the John McPaul workshop in 2018, I met Lauren, the author of this book. And that was my first time I actually met him personally. And that was like, a, for me, it was like a fan moment for me. And thanks to Liz and Wendy, because uh, it, it, it was them who actually introduced me to Lauren. And, and uh, it was a, uh, uh, actually, I didn't have the book with me, otherwise I would have gotten a um, signature or, or, uh, from the author of the book. Uh, so it was a great moment. That was on the 5th of April, 2018. So that was my second interaction with the uh, Raku. And the second time uh, I had the interaction was, was uh, when I went to the, uh, Pearl Conference in Riga in 2019. I remember uh, the, the, the day one uh, when we were given the, the in, in, introduction booklet and everything, the token and everything. I first time uh, uh, met Andrew Sitov. Before that, I only knew about him as, an, uh, as a Raku author uh, who, who writes book on Ratu, Raku. So that was my first time when I met Andrew. It was a it, it was a great experience talking to him and his team, who was conducting this uh, Pearl Conference in Riga. Uh, and and also, uh, I met JJ Merlo uh, at the conference, and he he gave me uh, one of his uh, book called "Learning to Program with Perl Six: First First Steps." And it was great. Uh, I'm, I'm so grateful for him to give me this book. It's, it's a great book for anybody who, who actually wants to uh, start uh, writing Perl 6 or IE Raku. Uh, it, it, it's a good uh, uh, first book for anybody. Uh, if somebody is, who has a little bit of Perl background can easily pick up Raku if you follow this book. So it, it's, it's a great book for me. And thank you very much for uh, JJ for presenting this book. And not only the book, he actually wrote a message for me in the book. It's a nice 
a compliment. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm, I'm honored that you know such a nice message for him, for me uh, in the book. Um, so that was my interaction with JJ Miller. That was on 7th of August, 2019. And on, on 8th of August, I remember when we had the attendees uh, dinner, again, uh, it was organized by Andrew and his team. And after the dinner, I remember, I don't know whether Andrew remember this or not, um, Andrew, myself, and Lauren, we had a long, long chat uh, uh, after the dinner. And it was the first time I ever had a such a long dis uh, discussion with somebody who I always idolize. And it was great talking to him and Lauren. And also, I, I also met Arn Sommer. We, I knew him from the weekly challenge uh, uh, days. I remember he, because he's one of the regular contributors to the weekly challenge. And that was the first time I met Arn at the conference and it was great meeting him. And I also attended his talk. He, I remember he, he did a talk on Raku, it's called Easy as Six. And I, I attended his talk, it was great. and Good learning experience for me because the, the, the best part of, of Arn in my experience is so far is he's such a great, uh, 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 he, he's such a good in explaining the difficult bits in such an easy language. So anybody who has a little bit of knowledge can easily pick up the, the harder bit. And otherwise, if you if th th there are people who are no good at explaining uh, difficult stuff, he's so good at it. So it was I was glad that I attended his uh, his, his talk, and which kind of encouraged me to uh, look further into the Raku. So uh, I, I'm thankful for Arn. Uh, <clears throat> With all this going on, and I have so many interactions with so many great people who have done so much to uh, in Raku, I finally had the uh, the courage to actually give my first presentation in Raku. And because my 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 background in Perl is basically uh, I am more into uh, writing modules and putting them all on CPAN kind of thing. So when I when I was learning the bits and pieces in Raku, my, my first intention was, okay, how do I create a, my Raku module so I can publish to something like CPAN or similar to CPAN for Raku? And that, that's where I, uh, I wrote my, uh, presented this uh, talk, and that was talking about how you can create your own module and how you can publish it and how you can do build and test kind of thing that normally you do as a Perl developer when you push to CPAN. So this was my presentation in the London Perl workshop, workshop in 2019. It was a great experience for me for doing this. Uh, and then in December, I, uh, I remember uh, JJ was doing this uh, Raku Advent calendar, and he asked me, Mohammed, if, if I'm interested to contribute to this Advent calendar. And that's where I, th I thought, um, I, I had something um, in my mind at that time that I wrote in Perl a long time ago, that was to create a maze uh, in Perl scale, so create a maze uh, game in Perl. So I thought, why not I can, I can convert that uh, Perl script into, uh, into Raku uh, with whatever little knowledge I had at that point. In, at that point, I thought uh, it's going to be fun to create a, a Raku Advent calendar, uh, uh, create a uh, presentation for Raku Advent. So that was one on day 17. My my make maker, uh, maze maker uh, in Raku was published. So thank you for thank you JJ Merlo for accepting my uh, my article for Advent Calendar. That was in 17th of December, 2019. And then the weekly challenge started. I remember that when I started the weekly challenge, before it was called Perl Weekly Challenge, my, my, my intention was to get both Perl and Raku team come together on, on a common platform and share their knowledge and experience. And while doing so, I thought, while we have 
so many experts on the same platform, I can learn from them, whether in the Perl or in the Raku uh, language itself. And that's where having seen so many people writing such a beautiful uh, Raku uh, solutions, uh, I, 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 I'm what inspired by many people. It's, it's going to be unfair if I take one or two names. Everybody, every Raku expert that we have in the team, they are such a genius. And they write beautiful code every week, week after week. And by just reading those code inspires me to write, uh, write for Raku as well. So that's where on 21st of December, uh, February 2020, I first decided that I'm going to start contributing in Raku. Before that, I used to do only per. I used to contribute only in Perl uh, as, 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 a, uh, as a weekly challenge uh, contributor. And that was the first time I had the courage to actually contribute in Raku. This, this is my first solution uh, for the weekly challenge uh, in, in Raku language. And if, if you look at the code, it's, it doesn't look like a Raku code. It looks like a Perl code, but uh, except one or two bit, which makes it uh, Raku. For example, if you if you know if you look at it carefully, then this dot flip thing, it doesn't exist in Perl, but it is it's, it's one of the uh, one of the feature that I like the most uh, in Raku, where you can you can flip a string, uh, and and also I remember when when I posted this solution. In, on the tutor uh, timeline, and remember, I think Viz or Lindy, one, one, I think, I think Liz, or maybe Wendy, but one of them uh, pointed out to me that Mohammed, instead of doing before that, I had a date is equal to date plus one to in, uh, to move date next day. I was told that instead of doing that, I can do plus plus date, like it worked. It, it date is an object, so I can still do plus plus date, and it'll increment date by one day. And instead of doing date is equal to date plus one. So that was something new that I didn't know at that point. And it was nice, uh, thanks to Liz, uh, that, uh, that I, I came to know about this. Uh, uh, you can do incremental operator uh, increment by using plus plus uh, on the date object. So that, that, that's another thing that I learned when I did this, uh, my, my first contribution uh, to the weekly challenge on 21st of February, 2020. Similarly, that, that's where I started regularly contributing every week, uh, with, starting with the same, because as, as you know, in the weekly challenge, um, I generally have, generally have a two, uh, two challenge every week. One is a simple challenge, which we call it a task one, and the other is, is a little bit harder challenge, which is call it task two. So during my early days, I, I used to only deal with the task one, the simple, uh, safe, simple challenge, because I was a little bit afraid of uh, doing a difficult one in Raku at that point. So this, I think this was one of the task one of week, week number, I don't remember whatever the week was. And then on week 51, this is something which I love the more. I loved it. I love it. Uh, it's, it, 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 uh, uh, the best part, the, the best part of Raku uh, I've come across is when you can, you can do so many things in, in, in join. I mean, you can, you can you can chain through different functions. You can chain through different objects, and uh, and it makes a it creates a simple, it's a nice looking one liner, uh, which is not possible in per, uh, in to my experience in my experience so far. So uh, as, as you can say, th this line it, I, I picked up this line because I love it. And um, what this line is in, in my uh, if if I'm not wrong is is was being is 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 sticking a, a list and then is splitting it and then finding a unique number and then joining it together again. So this is, and it, it and it it's, it's named in such a way that it's, it's look like you are reading in English. It doesn't look like a it's, it's like a, you're writing in a in a in a, in a programming language. It's look like you're writing an English sentence. It's like a con unique and join. It makes so sense uh, when you write code like this. It's beautiful. Love it. And the following week, week number 52, and this is the line from one, one of my contribution to the weekly challenge. And uh, I'm sure those who are experienced in Raku can easily figure out what this, this line is doing. But think from the from somebody who, who's not a Raku expert or not com 
who's not a serious Raku programmer uh, would find these lines. It, it, it does so many things in one line. And, I, and this Z operator is so powerful. And, and imagine if, 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 you, if you can combine all these powerful features of, of Roku, uh, and then you can come up with a nice little simple solution, which can do. The only, only thing I, I, I've experienced in so far, my, my experience with Roku is, is, is just, it's just that the, the, it, it takes a little longer compared to Perl solution. So every time when I do a Perl solution and compare that against my Raku solution, uh, I find my Perl solution a lot faster than, <coughs> excuse me, lot lot faster than and then the Raku solution. It, it could be uh, I'm not blaming the Raku language. It could be that uh, I I don't know the, the uh, I don't know enough of Raku to make it faster and to compete against my Perl uh, counterpart. But uh, uh, I still, uh, for the sake of uh, uh, keeping my knowledge, expanding my knowledge, I, uh, I still try, try my best. I try to learn from. So I still try to uh, expand my knowledge and learn from others. And I, 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 never, I never miss the opportunity to, to follow others, the uh, Raku contribution, try to uh, go to the, the the blog where where they explain things in detail. So that, that give me an opportunity to learn more about the Raku. With the following one, this okay, this is week challenge fifty four. Okay, this is the first time when I actually use the multi function uh, multi method. This is something which is again for a Perl developer is something new. And it, it's so fun when, when you have a feature like this multimeter where writing code like this, in this case, we, 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 we're dealing with a color sequence. And it, it makes reading the code so simple and it's, it's a nice and clean solution. Uh, and the, the best part is on, up and until you, to finish the code, it makes it, it looks so difficult. But once you've done the code, you know, the code, and you understand what you're doing, it makes so sense that okay, this is beautiful, and and you start loving the language more and more every time you uh, you see this kind of solution. And I, 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 for me, these these are my precious code. I keep going back and forth, back again, and to to see my code and make it, it makes me feel happy that yeah, I can write I can write code like this. Thanks to the Raku feature of multi uh, multi multi method, and I, I probably I don't need to go through. I don't need to explain you what this multi method is doing. is is so obvious if you just look through the code what it's doing. So it's, it's looking for if if the if the given uh, parameter is even is is doing is dividing that number by two, and if it is not, it's just doing is multiplying by three and then adding one on top of, and then. This this class sequence uh, calling a method with the, with the parameter and does everything. The, all the magic is happening in the multimeter. It's beautiful. Moving on to my next challenge, which was in weekly challenge number sixty three. What was this? Oh yeah, this was about <laughs> split, splitting a, a, a string and then reversing and finding the the, the last string and comparing it against the radius. One thing that I was a little bit uh, not sure about the regex, the, re the regex in Raku is slightly, uh, I noticed slightly different than how, how I do in Perl. First, first thing I noticed that sometimes uh, you have to put the, uh, the, the, the expression within the, uh, the, the angle bracket, uh, which I had a lot of tr trouble initially when I was keep fighting with my expression, regular expression, and keep getting the wrong answer. And then I looked around and find, asked people uh, on Twitter and other platform. And somebody told me you have to put the expression in, in the angle bracket before it, it will work. And once you put the expression into the angle bracket and suddenly uh, start working. And then I realized that the, what, the use of angle bracket in the expression, which is new to me uh, being a Perl developer, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure about uh, 
uh, about the angle bracket in the in the, in the regular expression. This is something new that Rocco introduced. So I loved it. So moving to the next, okay, this is the one. So this is week number 65. Yes, this is another uh, so challenge, which is uh, the, the one thing that I, I learned in this uh, solution is I, I, I knew about the grape function. Uh, and then it's, it's, if, if you look at the solution, I say start dot dot end dot grape, which is actually doing a grape from start to end. And if you, if you notice one thing is saying the arrow and dollar n is actually giving and uh, putting a uh, that each element that you find and putting it into a dollar n, which is something new, I didn't know about it. <coughs> the reason I, I had to do this because I, I wanted to do some operation on each element. And, and somebody told me uh, that this is how you do it in Raku. So you can name uh, the, uh, every element and then you can do any operation you want to do. So that, that's how I, I wanted to do dollar n dot split dot sum. And this is, so So if it is a named uh, uh, element, then it's easier and it's easy readable. So this is something uh, I learned in this week number 64, 65. Moving on to my next class. This is week number 67, what was this? This is about, okay, uh, this is another beautiful thing. As I said, um, the chaining method is, is is one of the best feature uh, I have come across in Raku. And this is another example where, uh, if you see, it's, it's like a one line written statement, which just everything that this function is doing. And all the operation of this function is put it in the one line by chaining different methods. And even if somebody who doesn't know Raku can easily read this uh, Raku code and will understand what this function is actually doing. So it, that's the power of Raku uh, in my experience. I mean, so so basically what, what this is doing is just finding the combinations uh, uh, of dollar n and then mapping through and, and later it's just joining uh, join the result. It's beautiful, isn't it? It looks so beautiful. That's what the power, power of, of Raku. And also, what did I do? Uh, yeah. And also this parameter validation is, uh, is another feature that I, I like about Rocco is you can you can put all the validation in in the definition itself. And, and as I said, it's when I put int dollar m where m is greater than zero. So this is something, <coughs> this is something, excuse me, this is something as is, is you can't do it in Perl. So you in Perl normally you accept the parameter, and the first thing that you do is uh, make sure you validate all the input parameters. In in Raku, you don't need it. Everything is defined in the in the method definition. Uh, when you define the method, you put all the all the validation code in in the method definition if you want. So that makes life so easier, and it makes so sense. Moving on to my next contribution, that was week number sixty eight. Oh yeah, this is where. I actually started, uh, created my class in Raku. Before this, uh, 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 I, 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 never, I never wrote a class in Raku. Before that, I, I used to do just a simple main function and just writing functions, uh, subroutines and function, call, call, calling them function in the main. So this is the first time I had the opportunity to actually create a class in, in Raku. And so it's a good learning experience for me where I, I, I learned how to create a class and, and how, to, how to create an attributes and various other base and pieces. The best part of it was, if you noted the solution, I have two implementation. One is, uh, one method is called show underscore show underscore link. That was my um, uh, implementation of uh, showing all the links. And when I, I remember when I posted my solution on Twitter, maybe on, on LinkedIn somewhere, I remember, uh, Maurice came back and saying, Mohammed, you can improve this uh, method and you can write something like a one-liner uh, if, if you see. So this one-liner was actually uh, contrib contributed by Maurice. Mm, well, I don't have to tell you who Maurice is. Maurice is one of the 
uh, great uh, Raku author. Uh, and he, he wrote many books on, on Raku. Uh, so, so when he uh, suggested uh, it looks so beautiful, isn't it? Uh, <coughs> but yeah, I still, I mean, it, 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 I, I'm sure with experience, I'll probably one day I'm gonna write can write this this kind of code. But for me, my way of writing is it still is, it looks like it's a pearl code. But I'm, I, I'm still thinking in the pearl way. But maybe one day when I have more experience, I can write Raku in Raku you know, way. Okay, moving on to my next contribution. Okay, so uh, okay, that was the 19th of August. <coughs> As I said, my 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 contribution to the Raku Advent Calendar, where, where I actually created a Raku script to create a maze, so it's it's making a maze. So I wanted to I wanted to create a a, a module uh, in Raku uh, to, con uh, to convert that script into a Raku module, and and this is this 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 was the namespace that I I decided to go with. It's called Games Maze. And uh, I, I remember uh, when when I can, uh, when I created this uh, this module in Raku, uh, uh, I had a little bit of trouble, so I asked for help, and I, uh, Simon Proctor uh, he 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 he's, he, get, he solved my issue, and, and that's when I finished this uh, work and contributed to the Raku uh, uh, CPAN uh, equivalent. This, uh, namespace and it's, it's published as <coughs> game space. I'm sure you will find it lots of uh, stupid coding in there, but that's how uh, I, as, as, a, as a Perl developer, that was my first contribution. And I, I feel proud about it. I, I don't know why, why uh, it, it looks like uh, it, it gave me a pleasure that I, I, can, I can write Raku, I can code in Raku and I, I, I can read Raku code. I may not understand every every uh, line of code, but I, I can I, I can easily make it make out. I can easily understand uh, the gist of it, and and all the all, all the all, all the support, all the documentation. They are nicely. Uh, um, uh, it's, it's relatively up to date, and you can find all the all, all the help in the documentation. And the best part with me, at least, is uh, I've got so many people that I know, and they are easily available, uh, and I can I can. I can reach out to my friends if I have any questions with regard to uh, Raku for the help. And that's it. I don't know whether I still, uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm behind time. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much for guys for going through my <laughs> timeline. May not be fun for you, but it was a great learning experience for me. And uh, I, I know there's still plenty to, for me to learn. And I, as, as somebody said, there's, there's no limit to learning. So you, even today, I find so many new things in Perl. So, for, but for me, Raku is still in, in my early age. I'm sure in coming years, probably uh, I'll, I'll brush up and make my skill better in Raku. <clears throat> and, and probably one day I can do CS contribution to the Raku language, maybe one day, maybe. Uh, that's my ultimate goal. And I'll probably open up for any questions if you want to ask me questions. 